they are unable to draw even though they are at table two. Yeah, it's they uh, could not draw. One X one one team will make it. Yeah. So they're going to be playing against the team of Royce Walter, Nick Patnode, and Lloyd Kurth of this team. The, the, the player that you probably have heard of before is Lloyd Kurth. He does have a top eight at Grand Prix Atlantic City, mm -hmm. uh, which he got seventh place. He also has a top eight at the Philadelphia Open in 2013 and seventh place at Worcester in 2012, another Open there. So, um, I mean, I think, did you play against him at Atlantic City? I yeah, think you did. We, we played a, a really fun match where okay. I just kept attacking him and he died. Because you playing red? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Obviously. You and mountains, always mountains. It's pretty Not always. That was the uh, the other two guys, again, are Nick Patnode, he's from Syracuse, and Royce Walter, also from Syracuse. So some New York guys that have made it down here, um, and they are battling for their life against Larson, Volson, and Bond. You see, we're going to start here with Bond against Kurth. Both players have a Muta Vault in their deck, but one of them has a Predatory Sliver, well, and one of them has a Malice Sliver. So, pretty good starts for both players, yeah. actually. Lloyd Kurth is uh, red-green Slivers, and is Michael Bond is kind of green-white Slivers. So, uh... We get to see how the new slivers don't work against your opponent's stuff. So. Bit of a display of that. Alright, so in for two we go. No mutavolt attack. And has a root wall to advance the board after that. Yeah. So Kurth is going to draw a card. Kurth has blur multiple blur slivers, multiple mana web slivers. He can start doing some crazy combo stuff. I mean, things can get out of control pretty quickly. I mean, Bond just looks like he has a solid, uh... Looks like he just has, like, a really, really solid green-white deck, honestly. Yeah, there's some good beats. And now, there's a troll hide. That's actually the first troll hide I've actually seen cast today. Really? Yeah. Which is surprising to me, honestly, because troll hide is a common, and it's, well, like, a really good card and everything. Three. Okay, That's how so many he's got. Won't be the last. Good to know. So he's going to come across for three points of damage there. Michael Bond dropping to 17. Representing... Four power for sure, up to six, eight if he has a land, nine with the pump. So, why well, could be just at nine life at the end of this turn if Mike just wants to shove? It's a pretty scary proposition. It actually is pretty scary. Yeah. We got to take all that damage, and of course, it's going to kind of be on the back foot. Yeah. But does Bond want to expand his board position, or does he just want to get in a, a bunch of damage and pass back? If that's a Sarah Angel in his hand. I think I want the damage. Yeah, and then play Sarah the next turn. Yeah, especially because. Uh, 14 is significantly less than 9 when you're counting in force. Yep. And now you see the Muta Vault get activated. Bond not going to play the land to pump up. I'm a little surprised. So he's going to come in for 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, if he has a 2 drop, 11 is the same in sure. when you're counting in force. It's 9. So, yeah, it's perfectly fine. And there is a 2 drop. Yeah. So we're going to slide it down, and it's a Deadly Wreck. It's actually a pretty good 2 drop right now. Yeah. I'm interested to see what Kurth is going to do on his turn because he got aggressive on his turn by playing the troll hide and attacking with the metal slivers and getting him for three points of damage. But now he's like he's behind on the board and behind in life total. And now he needs to start stabilizing. Where if he, yeah. if he if he doesn't make that attack and just plays a three three on defense and passes, it really slows Bond down and forces him to you know build uh to build his board. Well, I mean Bond still can attack with a muta vault if he doesn't do that. He can still attack with a root wallet. It's really just Lloyd opted to trade three of Michael's life for two of his life. Michael sitting there, stacked board, facing down a regenerator. Uh, Root Walla is guaranteed to be able to get in. Uh, you know, they each trade two mana. It's likely, if not, you know, or it's possible, if not likely, that he can shove with everything if he wants to. But if he's not gonna, is that an enlarge? Oh boy. That's just a Sarah Angel. So maybe Sarah he, maybe Angel. he does have an enlarge in his hand, but he's not casting it right now. I'm just gonna play that Sarah Angel and pass the turn back rather cast it on something that can't be shocked down. Yeah. So again, he's just building his board, and then, you know, and yeah, that is a large in his hand, so he's preparing for a very, very l yep, large yeah. turn, yes. large yes. attack next turn. Yeah, I feel bad <laughs> right now. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, Everyone has their off days. They really do. Boy. Well, like Kurth playing the second mountain, passing back, representing a couple of different Anything. things. I mean, it feels like it feels like the big card that he's representing right now is actually uh, Chandra's Fury. Or yeah. sorry, Chandra's Outrage yes. is the big one right now that it feels like. And especially when your opponent has two red mana and it's at common, it's uh, it's not hard to be able to represent that, but also it's right. not hard for Bond to be able to play around it. Yeah, and given his play earlier, I watched him play uh, 
around a removal spell for a long time, uh, two rounds ago. So I think he's inclined to not do that yeah. right now. Looks like Christopher Larson's already up a game. The last time we saw Christopher Larson on camera outside of this event was at Grand Prix Miami playing a red a red aggro deck. Well, he's so got he, he likes to win fast. It looks uh, like he's got the Regathan Firecat Maul, Rotting Maul Horror yep. deck. Yeah, with the time abs. Yeah. Are we typecasting him as a red aggro player? I don't know. Is that what he likes to do? Is the European Pat Sullivan. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So you see Bond kind of talking things over with the Volson a little bit here about what he wants to do. You see Thomas kind of asking, or kind of confirming about what Bond should do. Bond looks like he's tapping Mutavolt for mana. Maybe, okay, so it looks like he's activating Mutavolt. Interesting. Interesting. And now he's going to cast... Ah, okay, so okay. he's going to be casting Hunt the Weak. Because his Mutavolt is a 3-3, he wants to fight, he wants to battle here. It's going to become a 4-4. He's going to battle there, so now regeneration has to happen. Fighting there, so you know, if Lloyd has a removal spell to blow him out, he doesn't lose a relevant creature uh -huh. in the Sarah Angel. Yeah. Instead, he just loses the land. I like that. I like that play so much. Yeah. I mean, he's got a lot of different options of what he could fight with there, like the Deadly Recluse, you can make an argument for the Death Touch, you know, various other things, but I actually like this play a ton yeah. here. He keeps all of his creatures, doesn't risk anything to removal spell. Uh, Predatory Sliver not getting in, not gonna get traded for the Mutable. Root Wall, he's perfectly fine trading. Yeah. Um, Though, actually, trading for the Mutable, that's, you know, it's not just the fact that the Predator is over, guys. The Mutable's got three damage on it. Yep. Don't want to do that. So, if uh, Lloyd traded his Mutable for the Predatory Sliver for the attack, that'd be two for one. Yep. So, Mutable's gonna, looks like he's gonna man up and block the Root Wall. Maybe a Giant Growth being represented here? A Ranger style or something of that nature? Not entirely sure. Yep. So, he's gonna block Root Walla. He's gonna end up taking five. His current's gonna move down to six. Rootwall and Mutavolt are going to trade and he's going to pass the turn back. Lloyd Kurth, 6 life. Looks like he has an enlarge of his own in hand. Yeah, and he's just going to concede the game. So Michael Bond is going to win game number one over Lloyd Kurth. Christopher Larson also up a game as well. So the team of Larson and Volson and Bond off to a very nice start here in yeah. round nine playing for top four. Importantly, Bond didn't have to show that enlarge. Yeah, and that, that's definitely important. That card is, is definitely awesome. important. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's an uncommon. You'd rather show a common than an uncommon, given the uh, given the choice. Yeah. And I mean, by showing Hunt the Week, you know, you can it, sort of play. A, it's it's not like something that you necessarily can play around to the extent that you can play around it in large. Yeah, and you can expect Hunt the Week from a green deck in most cases. Where, yeah. You know, I, I I think that you know you might think there might be an enlarge, or or maybe there isn't, but you know. Yeah. It, it's at least going to leave them guessing for the next yes. game, which is important. Yes. So we see our outshot here. I think we're going to be moving on to the Volson Pat Node match. As again, Larson and Bond have won their matches. You see both of those players, along with Royce Walter and Lloyd Kurth, are sideboarding as we cut over here to Tomas and Volson and Nick Pat Node. Pat Node here with an Air Servant and a Chandra Phoenix in the air, along with some elemental tokens, likely from a young Pyromancer. And then the, and I then think that's from the Volt. Molten Rebirth. Okay, from the Molten Rebirth. Apologies. Oh, so he's so that's been rebought once. This time it failed. But, you know, one card, four tokens. Acceptable. Yeah, not so bad. Kind of like a Goblin Rally. Yeah. On the Volton side, you see the Corpse Hauler, Vampire Warlord, and also a Griffin Sentinel. With a Mark of the yeah, Vampire. Yeah, it looks like a Mark of the Vampire on it. There you guys see Molten Birth on the screen. Air Servant taps down the lifelink flyer. And just getting in there with the 4-2 vampire warlord. You see a Volton's hand right now. He's got multiple aura masters in his hand. Makes you wonder if he has any enchantments to bring back. Does not look like it. Looks like his graveyard is just in a cursed spirit. So he's gonna sacrifice that. Lose the Mark of Vampire as well, but he's gonna get the Mark of Vampire right back there with the Aura Mancer and pass the turn back. So he's got a slog through these elemental tokens. Yeah. Once we mark up the Warlord, it, the race turns a little bit uh, interesting. But until then, he's, he's got a fade pat note having almost anything. Yeah. And he just has a Seacoach Drake, the 1-3 flyer for two, and passing the turn back. So, Wilson going to play Mark on Builds the Vampire up. Warlord. Makes it a 6-4, sack a creature to regenerate it. Lifelink. That's yeah. the key. That is the key. Chump blocked by an elemental token. Thomas regains the sixth life that he lost on Pat Node's last attack. And there's a C-Skite, which is Pat Node's last turn. 
or last card, excuse me. So Patno's going to draw a card. Again, his board of Air Servant, Chandra's Phoenix, the Sea Skite, and the Drake. That's four, five, six, seven, eight. That's nine points of damage in the air. So drops Thomas to eight, opts to leave back the Drake. Yeah, so he's going to leave back the Drake. So four, five, six, seven, eight. But can he beat this six, four Vampire Warlord that can regenerate? A card like Disperse or Time Ed would be huge right now. Yes. Thomas is giving his hand. He's got a Sangir Vampire that is soundly trumped by that Air Servant. Yeah. This isn't the first time Air Servant has dominated a board position this weekend. Pet Note has the Zephyr Charge in the sideboard. It's a combo out with the <laughs> Air Servant. Uh, the enchantment that can actually give any creature flying, not just yours. Yes. So you can put, you can jump their creature and then tap it down with an air servant if you want to get really crafty. Jarvis, he was really excited about that combo a few days ago. Yep. I think that may have been why they gave him all the swamps. <laughs> <laughs> so we see four mana here post-combat. Looks like a Liliana's Reaver. Yep. And that's exactly what that's going to be. 4-3, Death Touch. Whenever it deals damage to your opponent, they discard a card and you get a 2-2 tap zombie. I, uh... Probably it's one of those cards that isn't you know they're not dead in a hit but they're they're pretty dead. They're not feeling good no. about taking a hit, especially in limited. Yeah, definitely true. And again, another attack here in the air. It's kind oh. of treading water right now. If you're Pat, no, there's a scroll thief. Just gonna pass the turn back. Thomas is taking two a turn, but Pat knows losing a creature a turn. Yeah, basically the abyss. Yes. It's a question of whether this clock in the air can uh, get ahead. Pat Node leaving back the Seacoast Drake so it can block down either the Oromancer or the Corpse Hauler. Yep. I think, you know, that one of his creatures is going to be on chump blocking duty. The question is, is is he going to attack with any other creatures? You guys see Liliana's Reaver on the screen. That thing is absolutely huge. A 4-3 for 4 mana. All relevant text on that bad boy, and it's turning sideways as well right now. Pat Node looks like he's chumping. He's blocking the Corpse Hauler, letting the Warlord through. Corpse Hauler's yep. sacrificed, gets back a Cursed Spirit. Pretty good card in this matchup, too. I mean, we saw a little bit earlier when uh, Owen Turtle was playing against Drew Levin, how a curse, how a Cursed Spirit just kind of dominated the game for yeah. Turtle Walls, just because Intimidate was so important. Hits the battlefield, Patno does not have an Essence Scatter for it, and is down to four life, facing down two lethal attackers, and dead in two hits to a curse spirit. And he has to draw something. He's staring at two islands right now, so. That's not something. That is uh, that is the definition of, of nothing. So he's gonna pass the turn back. He slowed down his attacking. So now if you're Voltson, you are thrilled that no more attacking, no more racing. I'm gonna get be able to get even more life, and I can just turn just about everything sideways. He's gonna leave Oromancer Ooh. back on defense. He could have gone for the kill. He's an Oromancer in hand, right? Yeah. Oh, Vampire Warlord is another creature. That is correct. All these new changes. Yep. I was thinking he could sacrifice the Warlord to itself, rebuy the mark, suit it up, and kill. But yeah, I mean, even if he could go for the kill this turn, it, it seems a little bit risky. Wouldn't. Yeah, it seems a little bit risky. You're so far ahead on board, your life total's only going up. So it looks like we have a chump block on the 6 4 and a double block on the Reaver to take it down. Nick left with only an air servant. Thomas going up to 18 life, playing another corpse hauler. Nick drawing just another land. Yeah, and just going to show him the three that he's drawn over the past couple of turns. You can see the game. So Thomas and Wilson is going to win his first game as well. So the team of Larson, Wilson, and Bond have all won game number one, playing for the top four right now. We've watched them win a few really fast, decisive victories. Yeah. yeah. I mean, their decks look like they're pretty good. Again, nothing insane, but they look like they have some pretty good decks. And these are three very, very good Magic players. For sure. And they, another thing we've you know brought up a little bit earlier is from what I understand, you know, they're all pretty good friends. Like, their team dynamic, pretty strong. Yeah. They may, you know, quibble and yell at each other, but it's all in good spirit. Yeah. And, and I was talking to them during their deck building session about just, how, you know, were they happy with their decks? You know, and, they, and then, again, they said that their decks were good. They weren't great, but they had good rares, and they were happy about that. And, you know, one thing that kind of goes underlooked and sealed is that even if your cards aren't that good sometimes, like, good rares are... are they can just win for you. Yeah. You know, there are days where you just draw your rares a lot and get the job done. Oh, absolutely. I, uh, I have some experience drawing Dom Reese and Savage Born Hydras over and over. <laughs> Not the worst problem to have. Here's a time map as we're going to cut into Larson versus Walter. Time is going to put Child Knight back on top. You see a pacifism on one of Larson's creatures. He has an Oromancer as well. So we cut into the Walter Larson match. Walter at 28, Larson at 8. Looks like he's going to be going down to 6. Relatively clear board. 
Walter's paying two, dropping a child of night. Uh, generic 2 1. Life gain's not a huge deal in the situation. Looks like Larson has a volcanic geyser in hand. Hoping to save that for something larger than these 2 1s and 2 2s, two but we'll see if he has to fire it off. Intervolt's in providing some between game help. Time ab again. Right back. Is that a Claustrophobia is the other card? Yeah, it looks like it's Claustrophobia and Volcanic Geyser. So Larson's going to go down to four from this attack from the Oromancer. He's really here using the... his life as a resource here. Yeah. And here comes the Child Knight again. So Time Ab playing as a makeshift Time Walk. Here's a Messenger Drake to try to hold yep. the fort now. So definitely Stay... using his life yeah. as a resource. Exactly enough life left over so that he can block a two power guy, mm -hmm. take two, survive this attack. Sort of just make it through. Yeah, I mean, that's assuming that Walter has nothing, though. I mean, even though he's been denied a draw set for the past two turns, he does have multiple cards in his hand. You see him reaching for three mana right away, and it's going to be a quack sickness to take care of the Messenger Drink. Larson going to get the draw yeah. card. I'm guessing is, you know, the way he shoved that card down, he knew about that off the Aura Master. Mm -hmm. Child of Night's going to get destroyed via this Volcanic Geyser. It does fight the dust. Here comes the Aura Master. Christopher Larson down to two, but his draw, his hand is Aura Master Claustrophobia. There's a hand that you can come back with. That's it's a good two to have. Oh, is that a Shivan Dragon? That, I, that looked like a Shivan Dragon. He just, he just, need, he just needs some more life. I mean, the Black White deck doesn't have reach, but I mean, you can't be comfortable seeing it too against a deck that probably has like some flying or some fear or what have you. Archaeomancer is going to get cast. It's going to bring back the Volcanic Geyser. The Shivan Dragon is an interesting draw step too because it's a card that can really, really turn the game around in a hurry. Yes. 28 is, uh, looking at this, that's, what, six red sources? Yeah, that's three hits. Yeah. Yeah, that's not very long. It, the question is, can, can he get it online? Yeah, so here comes that, and yep, you got to take care of it with yep. the Volcanic Geyser for three. Fireball down. Royce gonna just pass the turn back. All right. Wow. So can Larson turn the corner? He draws a Flames of the Firebrand. In for one with their Kaelmancer. Going to put Walter down to 27. And is he going to slam down the Shivan Dragon? You see him move six mana yeah. aside. No it, reason not to. Yeah, get it out there. Uh-oh. Doomblade. All right, so he does have an answer, does Walter, in Doomblade. So we're going to have to go about this the hard way. <laughs> one point at a time? Might not have enough cards in the library, actually, thinking yeah. about it. Quack Sickness to draw for Walter this turn. So he has a Quack Sickness in his hand. There's a Shock for Larson. Going to put Walter down to 26. Three removal spells, but a 1-2 clock. Mm -hmm. The draw here of KO, uh, excuse me, of Oromancer here. That is a good draw. That is another Quack Sickness. Yep. That's another removal spell. Uh, this is uh, this white-black Aura's business is uh, a nice one to be in. I like this deck a lot. If you can get it, you know, I wonder how feasible it is to get it into like a booster draft, but you know, doing a sealed last weekend at uh, Gunsling and Roanoke, I actually got the white black enchantment deck in sealed. Mm -hmm. uh, I had like an Johnny's Chosen, a Blightcaster, three Quack Sicknesses, a couple Pacifisms, and I, I think if you can get it, it's one of the best decks in the format. So Christopher Larson shocks down the Oromancer and brings the 1 1 beats again. Yep. Or 1 2 beats. Yeah, block Rock and beats. Oh, yeah. Some would say. Island, the draw step across for one, we go. Walter down to 24. Such Larson. a long way to go for Larson. Larson holding back a mountain to discard to a potential mind drop. Yeah. Opting to play the island, but keeping the mountain. One three Griffin hits the table. And the, uh, it, 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 if you're Larson, yeah. The, the worst part is you actually have to use a removal spell on a card like Griffin Sentinel in this, in this game. Yeah. Like if you're at two, and you know he might know that Walter has that Mark of the Vampire in his hand from yeah. from earlier because we see the multiple War Masters in the graveyard. But the fact that you have to use like every removal spell. To be able to kill the creatures that Walter draws has got to be infuriating. Like this, this two three. You yeah, have to exactly. flames of the firebrand this now. My question is, why did he not flames the first guy? I'm a little surprised by that as well. Choosing to use claustrophobia on the first guy because I think that flames is the, is the worst removal spell at this point. Yeah. Yep. Especially, uh, that's a battering maulhorn. Yeah, that's or the five marauding three. maulhorn. That's that the five one. three. It's dead to quag sickness though. Everything dies to quag sickness. Yep. Is that a creature? And now follow up play. I think that's the Haunted Plate Mail. Oh, yep. yeah, that's, that's a creature. Yeah. You could say that. That is, quote, a creature, in for one. We haven't seen that one on camera yet. The interesting, thing, the interesting thing about the Plate Mail is that he can't activate it. He's of, got the Griffin. Because he's got the Griffin <laughs> that's in the box. So he has a creature that can't attack, but he can't use the Haunted Plate Mail. He's trying to activate yeah. it. Yeah. 
Nope. Hundred Plate Mail is also a contender for coolest card in the set. So behind Boggs Brew Rich and uh, that trio. This, is an this aura master is bringing the pain. This is an unreal game. And Larson feels like he's kind of taking control of the game, but he actually hasn't in reality. And what I actually think is going to have to happen now is I think Walter might have to try to kill his own creature to try to kill Larson with the Haunted Plate Mail. It might come down to that, as now Larson's going to play a Pitch Burn Devil. Passes the turn. Walter draws his card, another land. Second time today we've had a scenario call where you might want to kill your own creature. Yeah. Interesting. That, he could have done crazy. that last turn, right? Yep. He has a quiet sickness. He, he might have I mean, just missed I that. Think, I think that he just didn't realize that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that, that he had a creature in play because once it's claustrophobia, he's just like, okay, that, that's quote, dead. Yeah. Unquote. Yeah. It's just not there. And so he's got a quiet sickness to pitch burn devils. I think he just didn't see that line. Yeah. And I, I still think he doesn't see that line. Wow. I mean, now things have changed where he actually has to kill the Pitchburn Devils so that he can actually kill his Griffin Sentinel and then push through. But right. here comes our KO Mancer again. In for one. Going to put Walter down to 15. Looks like another Maulhorn. All right. The Red Juggernaut. Draw a card. What do we got? Couldn't quite make out what that was. Yeah. Doomblade. Oh, that's a good one. This Man, is a lot of removal spells I was, you, I was about to say the same thing. Walter's deck has a ton of rules, but you guys see on the bottom there, too. Two Doomblades. Michael Bond, Lloyd Kurth, tied up now, one to one. So they'll be going to a third and final one. Bond will be on the play that game. Three Quag Sickness. Wow. That's a lot of removal. Pacifism. Diabolic Tutor for whatever he wants. Two Aura Masters to Quag Sickness. Lots of things dying today. You see, Walter asking his teammate, Pat Note, should I cast this Doomblade on the Marauders? Is Larson going to fight back with a cancel? He is. He realizes that he needs this to be able to try to win. Another time. They didn't see the play on the Griffin. Yep. Okay. Pat Note evens up his match. 1-1. One, one. So we got two game threes and uh, a tense game two going on over here. Wow. He's going to untap. He's going to pass the turn back yet again. So now Walter's going to... Excuse me, Larson's going to come in for six more. I think it's going to put Walter down to three. Yeah. Now Larson's counting his mana. Yeah, that's a really comfortable feeling if you're Walter. He's counting his mana. Now he's looking through his graveyard. What did he draw? I think, if I saw correctly, he's counting how many lands are left in his deck. Okay. Yeah, because he just has an island and a mountain in his hand. Okay. Yeah, he's got two lands left, I think. See, Walter's hand, he has a show of valor. Got a bunch he, of... It looks like he has some spells in his hand. I just don't know what they are. Mark of the Vampires. And he's going to concede the game. So Christopher Larson wins this match. And you see him kind of smiling 2-0. to zero. So he beats for his Walter. But he was at 26. That's insane. That was a that comeback. Game that is an insane comeback. And I don't, I mean, I don't think Walter or Pat Node realized that he could kill the Griffin Sentinel, activate the plate mail, and get the job done. And now you see... Bond extend the hand against Perth, and I think that means I'm not sure. Maybe okay. Actually, I think they're still playing. I think they're still playing. Never mind. He's got the card face off. Yep. No, that, they're packing yeah, I'm not up. Not sure. Yeah, they're packing up. So we're gonna get the result brought in here in just a moment about who won that game. You see Bond immediately going over to Volson to find out what's going on in his game. So yeah, we'll, we will tell as soon as we know what happened between Kurth and Bond, we'll let you know. Kurth won, oh so boy. it's even up here. It's on the third and final game between Avolton and Pat Note for who's going to win this match. For who's going to top four this event. Uh huh. It's game time. You see Avolton is shuffling, pile shuffling his deck right now, so this may rep be representing a mulligan being taken here. Oh boy. And uh, importantly, it. Enavolton, I don't. Is he good for next weekend? Is this his battle for Enavolton? Enavolton is qualified for okay. next weekend from a from the SCG in Cincinnati last year. That okay. he top four with death and taxes. Oh. Enavolton is is taking a mulligan here, down to at least so, six. So we're playing this game for Christopher Larson's qualification. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Bond is qualified already from winning two weeks ago with Junk Aristocrats. Enavolton is already qualified from a top four in Legacy in Cincinnati last year with death and taxes. So Christopher Larson. <laughs> Besides making top four of this tournament, this is also for qualification to the Invitational next weekend in Somerset, New Jersey. 
Yeah. So this is this is a battle for someone else's tournament life. And it's out of his <laughs> and it's out of, and it's out of his hands. He can't do anything. I guess he can help. But if, if but if if uh, if Olsen doesn't agree with his plays, then he can't he, really help. He just wants to see his friend suffer, man. Yeah, 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 he can't really help. <laughs> so all right, that's a pretty important match. I mean, and they'll even take away the you know Walter, Pat Node, and Curse. We don't know if those players are qualified. Um, we know that um, Curse is qualified. Right. But is Walter and uh, Pat Node qualified? That's a big question as well. So there's actually uh -oh. a lot of riding on this. And it doesn't look like the Volton Pen is very good. It looks like a five time. And on the deck. Yeah. <laughs> you see a smile? I think Bond tried to convince him to keep. <laughs> and take another mulligan. So down to five he goes. Christopher Larson does not look very amused at this uh, no, sequence not at of all. events. No, not at all. Does not look too pleased at all. That would leave uh, two Larsons trying to queue tomorrow from the group? Yeah, the only other one of the European contingent, Joel Larson, has not been able to qualify yet. Last uh, last week, or two weeks ago, excuse me, we were in Worcester, he actually ended up getting like 12th place with Grixis. Mm. Kind of the outside looking in, Yeah. unfortunately. He said he might be playing it tomorrow, so we'll see. Yeah, uh, he said that he's considering an updated build to Grixis for the Standard Open tomorrow. Opportunity is a pretty big gain, I think. That's what it looks like. I mean, no Sphinx is revelation, but what is? Yeah. What is? Close enough. Pat Chapin was talking about it, I think, in his article. Was that today? Uh, it was uh, ye yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday one. on Friday. Yeah, we're, we're, you know, Chapin, of course, a big Grixis, Grixis enthusiast, talking about, you know, the effect that opportunity has and some of the other removal spells and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I agree that Grixis does get those upgrades, but again, it's very difficult to duplicate the power of Sphinx's Revelation, as good as a card as the opportunity Gosh, is. Yeah. It, the, drawing cards is only part of what Revelation does. Yeah. The life gain really seals the deal. Yeah. As, same with Cruel Ultimatum back in the day. Is it? Okay. Three, okay. four, and five. It's another one lander. No, it's a two lander. Is it a two lander? Looks like a one lander. There's a planes. All right, so he does have a swamp, too. All right, so there is a young pyromancer. Swamp drawn for the turn. Wilson's going to pass the turn back. Pat node going to start by attacking for two with that pyromancer. Does play an island, and let's see if he has a three draw. He does not. So, and a Volton draws a swamp for the turn. Looks like he has a quag sickness. Going to take care of that young pyromancer. Is there a negate or a cancel or something here? There's a disperse. That's going to give him a 1-1. One, one. Okay. Save our guy. Make a 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Not a bad option. Two mana. There's your young Pyromancer. Come across roll with the elemental token. Going to knock a Wilson down to 17 as he draws a swamp for the turn. triple Mark of the Vampire? What's that? His hand looks like it's triple Mark of the Vampire. It's a lot of those. And a Fiend Slayer Paladin. Wow. If I'm correct, is Fiend Slayer Paladin only opponent's control? Because if it's not, that's actually really funny. Can't be the target of black or red spells your opponent's control. That is correct. That's lucky. A little bit of a dodge there. What's unlucky is the one plane that yeah. he has in play right now. <laughs> and how he needs to draw a second one immediately. Oh, another swamp. Thanks for showing up on Oh, boy. Thomas down to 11. Pat Node just sitting with mana up. That does not bode well. Draw a card. Oh. Another swamp. Pass the turn back yet again. Pat Node draws his card. And it looks like Pat Node has an essence scatter in his yeah. hand. Yeah. And so he's going to play... Molten Rebirth. Rebirth, three elementals. Gives you three? Oh, yeah, because the young Pyromancer. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right, so in for three. Yeah, that's uh, no shrivel in this sideboard either. Mm. Wilson draws a card. It's a Death Gaze. Cockatrice. I can't essence scatter that one fast enough. That's got to go. Make and another, another guy. Another guy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven damage. With the young Pyromancer and those tokens, and does he have a burn spell to wrap this up? He does in Flames of the Firebrand, and that is going to do it. So Nick Patno does win the match for his team, and they're going to be playing in the top four later yeah. tonight. You know what the best part? He even won the role in the Molten Rebirth. Oh, sure. <laughs> a little rebuy action. So congratulations to Royce Walter, Nick Patno, and Lloyd Kurth for Christopher Larson, Thomas Goldson, and Michael Bond. A pretty tough loss to take. Yeah. Playing for top four, Larson hoping to qualify for the Invitational next week, next week in Somerset, but he's going to have to yeah. try it tomorrow, because yeah. it's not going to happen today. Watch his chances slip away through someone else's fingers. Yeah, and it's it's kind of funny, that Mulligan to 5 is actually pretty good. Yeah. You know, he's got he's got Triple Mark of the Vampire, he's got Fiend Slayer Paladin. Yeah. How, um, how do you kill a Fiend Slayer Paladin? I mean, yeah, the best that the best that Pat Notes that can do is either Disperse. counter it with Essence Scatter, which he ended up having here, or yeah, dispersing it. 
and Disperse actually was used on that young Pyromancer. Yeah. So if if, if Volton was able to actually draw a 